Hello and welcome to Regrade Request, where two college professors take a second look at questions and answers from around the internet and from you, the listener. My name is Professor Will McBurney. And I'm Professor Mark Sheriff. And we have been teaching together now for a little over a year now. And, and we decided that after having answered so many student questions and regrade requests <laughs> and regrade requests that coming into the summertime, we just we just couldn't stop. We just couldn't stop. I and mean, we, were, we were looking at, at, at our grade scope. We were looking at what students had turned in and thought, oh, my gosh, I, I need this hit. I, I need more questions <laughs> to answer. I need more silly things that we have seen. And and in our days, uh, we, we have seen some silly questions. Yeah, it has been uh, it's been interesting. Usually most of them are questions that have already been answered, and some of the ones that we have today may already be answered, but nonetheless. But that's the that's the fun of it, and that's what we did. We went is what we were gonna do, y'all, is uh, we went around the internet trying to find questions that had answers or dubious answers or good answers or whatever answers they might be, and we're gonna take a look at them, see what we think, give an answer of ourselves, just see kind of kind of where it leads. I, I think the, the best description here is, you know, the Yahoo answers uh, segment from my brother and mother, my brother and me. Well, imagine that, except maybe with more tech and more gaming and more other sites, I guess. And also, Yahoo unlike Yahoo answers still existing, rip. Well, <laughs> well, wah, let, wah, wah, wah. I know. well it's not let, really let's a good funeral we... noise. That's what I want at my funeral, like as they're lowering me down. Just, wah, 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 wah. That's horrible. Why would you ever want that sort of thing? I, I like dark humor, and that seems like a good way to go out. Oh, OK. All yeah. right. All there's right. something right. there's something philosophically deep there, I'm sure. It's not just me being a troll in and after life. Oh, I was waiting for the, the, the thing being deep as you being six feet down. But OK. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Not yeah. deep enough for my humor. Anyway. Oh, ooh, ouch. So, uh, McBurney, you've got some questions. I've got some questions. Who who wants to to have the inaugural, the first? This is this is the question. This is where we're gonna either keep our listeners or we're gonna lose all of our listeners. I don't know if what I can deal the, with that kind of pressure. What is the, what is the first question? Do you want to do it? You want me to do it? Uh, I, I think I want. I, I, like you've put so much pressure on it now. I think you have to. All right, so so to give everyone kind of a taste of this, these might have a little bit of a tech flair to it, some of them, some of them more gaming, some of them, who knows, we'll see where they go. But this question comes to us from Stack Overflow, which is certainly a favorite site of many of our students when they're going to look for tech answers. And this question was asked over nine years ago, does have a couple really good answers in it, but we're going to take a shot at it too. And the question is, why does HTML Think Chuck Norris is a color. Now, Ooh. for those of you that don't, yeah. So for those of you that is, don't, that do, is a flashback in terms of yeah. in terms of the the material of that joke. Not only Chuck Norris, because Chuck Norris was, of course, a, a, still a, an internet thing, but you know, hard coding those HTML cards. So HTML for those who are not in the tech area, hypertext markup language, the 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 language of writing a web page. It turns out. In the code, if you put BG color, so that's background color, BG mm -hmm. color equals right. Chuck Norris, mm -hmm. it comes out a lovely shade of red. One might argue the shade of blood, <laughs> a very, a very deep and intense red. Um, um, so I, so I, let me, let me take a shot at this. I think okay. it's because um, the people who, who made the internet, because I assume it was invented by like a group of people, right? Um, oh, of course. That 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 they weren't going to make Chuck Norris a color, and and Chuck Norris would have none of this. And he started just roundhouse kicking them uh, out out of doorways repeatedly. They didn't even know they had that many doors in their office. But that's I mean, you can't just roundhouse kick a guy. You got to roundhouse kick them out of a door. That's the Chuck Norris way. And, and eventually Come they're on. like, fine, we'll give you a color. And the only color they could see at that point was blood because it covered the walls. So they went oh, with that. Gosh. Is that is so, that that's the answer, right? That So, OK, so now we've started not only with a tech joke, but also a callback to Walker, Texas Ranger, which I'm sure that has just chased <laughs> off all of our former students that, that were yep. listening who are in there. 
in their in their early twenties. In fairness, um, like Chuck Norris jokes were like a thing when I was in middle school. Like that's fair. <laughs> That is fair. Uh, so we'll get to the answer first, but I decided to do a little bit of, of exploration in this space. And so I decided, well, what about some other famous folk? Why don't I look up some other people and determine what color they are? So first, hey, we're nerds. Let's do it. Let's start with the Avengers. Robert Downey Jr. What color do you think Robert Downey Jr. is? Cocaine white. <laughs> Are we, are we going to get sued now? Is that, oh, is man. that how that works? It, tur- it turns out, so I was hoping he would be red, maybe with, I don't know, maybe a yellow in the middle mm-hmm. for, for Iron Man, but it turns out he is royal blue. Hmm. Royal blue. Chris Evans. What do you I, think? I, I'm sure whatever color it is, it's insanely attractive. Uh, it, is, it is a gorgeous shade of red, uh, very okay. similar to, to Mr. Norse himself. How about Mark Ruffalo? That is, that is beige, uh, obvi- the, the most beigeiest beige you've ever seen. Just the blandest beige ever. I, I wanted green so bad for obvious reasons. It turns out uh, Mark is a navy blue. Hmm. Scarlett Johansson. Is it, hang on, you- is it a boring navy blue? Because I got to be honest, if you've seen Mark Ruffalo in any other movie, that, that would be what I would expect. It, it's a very tasteful, it's a very tasteful, respectful navy blue that gives away more than it should during interviews. Yes, so, but, it's all, that, but it's also boring, I imagine. No, okay, fair enough. Okay, yeah. all right, good. Okay. Scarlett, Scarlett Johansson. Well, it has Scarlett in the name, so you'd have to imagine a red, right? And it is! It actually right. is hey. almost exactly, it, it's, it's pretty impressive. Uh, Jeremy Renner. Uh, is, that, is that guy in the Avengers? <laughs> oh, that's right. He's he's Hawkeye. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's the guy who's like, oh, yeah. And also I have a bow and arrow. Like, yeah, I have superpowers. I can't like I'm sh- if I'm shot, I'm fine. It's like I can hit people if I arc my shot properly, account for the wind and aim correctly. And otherwise, I'm just a guy. Uh, Yeah. So I'm going to go. I'm going to go with beige, but with a slightly scowling oh. face. All, all this, all this Hawkeye hate. I mean, he's got. I mean, come on. It's it. I mean, he's like Green Arrow with less money. Um, uh, he's also a bright red. Is it so Green he, Arrow we, also just a guy with a bow and arrow? He's very, very rich. That's very important for Green uh, Arrow. He's very, very rich. Okay, so if we go through these names just really quick, so we had Chris Evans, Chuck Norris, Scarlett Johansson, Jeremy Renner. They're all red. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're going to look and see how their names kind of line up with this in just a second. Mark Sheriff, me, I'm also a bright red. Oh, wow. You're you're a color. I am. I, I is a color. And you, Will McBurney, you are bright green. OK. OK, so so here here's how some of this, uh, you know, we, we have a little bit of evidence here. Mm-hmm. Turns out. Here's where the answer is coming from. Back in the long, long ago in the way back times, Netscape Navigator. So when Netscape Navigator, an old browser, which some of you may or may not have used, by the way, the code for Netscape Navigator came out of Mozilla, which is now Firefox. And so there is a history here. And when those colors were put into the HTML, the browser would read BG color equals and would see something there and it would do its best to figure out what the color should be. What it's looking for is a hexadecimal value. Mm-hmm. And those hexadecimal values go from zero to F. And it's what it does is it takes the first six characters of the name, roughly. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it pads off. It depends upon the implementation of the browser. And then says, okay, which of these are hexadecimal values? So when we are talking about a name, I don't know anyone that has a four in their name, like the numeral mm-hmm. four. It tends to start with A, B, and C. Right. Mm -hmm. So the A, B's, C's, D, E, F, if those letters appear in the first three letters, well, R, G, B, if you have those in the first three letters, it's going to push hard on the red. Right. So will W I L is zero, 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 which means there's no red whatsoever. And that's how we end up with a lovely shade of green. Ah, because because W is not in the A through F and I, I don't have any A through F until you get to the sixth letter. 
There you go. That's exactly right. what happens. Turns out our friend Aaron Bloomfield, A A R, so right there at the beginning, you got mm-hmm. two A's, and then the B for Bloomfield there is in the second set for the right at the beginning of the uh, uh, the the B mm-hmm. set for R G B, and his is a lovely lilac. Okay. All right. It's just yeah. it's very calming and very peaceful. So it so it just ignores. So in the case of Chuck Norris, you have the C, and then it effectively treats the H and the U as a zero. Right. Exactly right. And then it treats the C as a green. So that would be the the lesser digit of the green uh, hexadecimal. So it would be mm-hmm. of it would it would add barely any green, but enough to probably make it a bit darker and browner to make there it you go. kind of the blood color. Right. There you go. And then yeah, okay. So that makes sense. That makes sense. So that would be C zero zero C zero zero. Perfect. And so looking here, and so I think what we should do with these questions is, you know, we gave our take on it. We did a little bit of exploration. I'm looking at the answer that was given here in uh, Stack Overflow, and um, there is a little bit of disagreement among some folks as to exactly what was the exact breakdown of the, the algorithm. But you know what? I think this answer has an A+, plus, sticks with an A+. Plus. This answer is a good one. There's no regrade needed here. This okay. was a good question. All right. Um, all right. Well, here I have one. This is uh, from the Arcade Stack Exchange. Oh, why did, okay. Why did my relationship with my wife go down by two hearts? <laughs> so, so let's just let's just take a moment before I read into this question. Uh huh. Um, why? Why do? Why? What? What things have you done in the past that? See, so you've been married longer than I have, right? Uh huh. I'm just entering the second year of marriage, which is rumored to be the hardest. Okay, I am gonna let my wife listen to this podcast, so let's be <laughs> careful here, okay? <laughs> All right. Well. Well. Uh-huh. So ha- has your has your relationship ever gone down two hearts? Honestly, I don't think so. No. Well, no, and I'm not. I'm not saying that. Saying, "Oh, honey, you're gonna listen to this podcast." No, I think it's. I think, I think it's been good and strong and wonderful and everything. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm still. You know, I'm still in the honeymoon phase. Uh, you know, even though we've pretty much been at home the last year with the pandemic and everything, it has been going mm. well. Um, so let let's just go over some of the things that maybe have contributed. And and by the way, this game. This is a reference to a game specifically Stardew Valley. Um, oh, okay. All right. Yeah. All right. I was expecting like a Skyrimish sort of thing, but then I, no. I wasn't. I didn't know if there were hearts there. I was trying to think of. I mean, how, how about some things in real life that that could knock down? I mean, you know. Um, I mean, I forgot to do the cat litter for a couple days. That certainly can can put the heart down, not just of 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 my wife, but also my cats. But is that two heart? Like what what metric by which we measure two hearts? My cat's litter box smells really bad, so that's that 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 could be that could be two hearts. That's super effective. Yeah, I, I'm assuming two hearts is pretty bad. Um, okay, just because in Stardew Valley, if you give someone like their absolute favorite gift on their birthday, that gives you like one heart. So oh so that, that would have to be like a really big thing to go down two hearts. Like you, wow. We're, we're at this point. Like let let's let's figure some things out that would really hurt a relationship that much. Um, let's start at the extreme end. You kill Uh-oh. one of their family members. <laughs> oh that would be that would be like that would be two hearts and and also wow. and also a life sentence, depending on the nature of the uh, killing, of course. Probably. <laughs> Probably more than two hearts okay, in that case. Let's, let's examine the energy we've got going on now. We went from Chuck Norris and HTML colors to let's talk about murdering people. <laughs> this seems like the this seems like the right direction to go here. Or well, tell me in Stardew Valley, in Stardew Valley, mm-hmm. what's considered a two heart? If one heart plus one heart is I got, I got right. you know, breakfast in bed. I got the best present ever. Two hearts down. What's two hearts down? You you forgot to water the plants? This is Stardew Valley. No, no. Be, I mean, that wouldn't cause... So the thing is, is that... That's actually why the person's asking this. Because nothing seemingly should cause this dramatic a drop. Mm-hmm. Um, so, should I go through what their experience was? That that, And let's see if maybe we can figure out okay. which one of these occurred. All right, so let's I, tease it out. So first... 
They are uh, in Stardew Valley. They are married to Abigail. Abigail, if you remember, is the daughter of the grocery store owner who also likes to uh, eat amethyst. Um, this is this is an internet meme, but it is it is based on the lines in the game. Okay. okay. <laughs> yes. So she likes to eat purple rocks. Um, all right. So some of the things that occurred uh, the other day, 14th fall. Uh, I woke up, and as usual, noticed that the relationship went from thir- like talk to the wife as no- and you and noticed that the relationship went from thirteen hearts, uh, which ten is typically a marriage event, down to eleven. Mm. So, what of the following three things do you think could have affected that? Okay, One, they gave a gift to Emily, another girl in the town. Uh, Ooh. Yeah, and they're trying to get the recipes, and in order to do this, you need to get uh, seven hearts with Emily. So they were trying to get to uh, seven hearts, and they saw the six heart event with Emily. Okay. Uh, That was one. Two, it was Abigail's birthday, and he gave her amethyst. Again, amethyst, she loves to eat it. It's her favorite meal. Loves that sweet, crunchy rock. Yeah, that rock candy. Uh, Love it. uh, Uh, which he had also given on her previous birthdays. Oh, um, yeah, same present. I did it later birthdays. than usual because in the morning she was playing her flute. Okay, and then overnight, a meteor <laughs> struck the farm. <laughs> <laughs> which, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, like, you know, a meteorite landing on your property is, is probably going to lead to some agitation, some angst, you know, like... Uh, this again, great. Now we have an extinction level event we have to deal with, you know. But, but what were you? Was the was the main character actually accused of like Something this is your me. fault? It's all your fault. I mean, I I've mean, been... that's not a thirteen heart level <laughs> assumption. That's like a oh honey, we need to work together to get past to get past this extinction level event. We've we've stockpiled so much insure. We've made sure we've given the the, 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 the the tunnel underneath the farm and we can mm-hmm. we could just stay there forever. Why am I channeling deep impact? That movie was That movie anyway. was that movie was worse than Armageddon, and Armageddon was fing Armageddon. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Deep Impact is always better than Armageddon because Deep Impact had Morgan Freeman as president. Okay. And so, All right. Okay. Period. Yeah, fair point. Fair point. Period. But it also had Elijah Wood as not Frodo. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, wow, this is... We're, we're going down some paths here. <laughs> anyway. But Elijah okay. Wood, Elijah Wood in Tron Uprising. Very good. So, anyway. All right. So, there is in Stardew Valley a jealousy mechanic that can occur. Um, but... The, the the spouse would actually give a unique message if they were jealous. Um, further, you get, if you make your spouse jealous, you get a 30-point friendship penalty. For context, a heart is 100 points. So, effectively, okay. one-third of a heart, yet this person lost two hearts. And I should note, you can only give uh, two gifts a day. They only gave one gift to Emily in this case, so Mm. shouldn't have happened, right? Mm. Well, (laughs) it turns out... um, Well, do you have any any, any other guesses? I I have no idea. It it turns out they were actually playing Skyrim. turns out they were actually playing (laughs) Animal Crossing, okay? Well, so the the Stardew Valley wiki, this is the entire sentence uh, that is under under the statement bugs. Occasionally, a spouse's heart meter will drop overnight by approximately two hearts for reasons that are completely unknown. And that is it. (laughs) That is that is the oh, answer, unfortunately, oh, in this case. Oh no no no! I know the answer to this one. This is programmer on game had a uh, came to work one day and was like, "Gosh dang it! This is just the way life is for me, and I'm just going <laughs> to inflict this." Concerned ape was just a bit disgruntled that morning. They just uh, yeah, exactly. Just like, I just you know sometimes sometimes life is just going to get to you. Yeah, and I want to represent that in Stardew Valley. <laughs> you you think that just this is this is just uh, concerned ape just hacking in like his disgruntled life theses? No, um, that, I mean I think I think there is something valuable to say here, which is first, Stardew Valley is an incredibly successful game and a great oh, game. Oh, absolutely. Um, and yet 
it still has bugs like this where they honestly don't know why they're emerging. And the game mm-hmm. is, you know, it's complex, but it, it's nothing on the scale of, you know, like a modern uh, open world game in terms of complexity, right? But the point is, is that, you know, different bugs can be tolerable even in games. And, and I think something that people just need to accept is sometimes in software bugs are going to happen. Certainly mm. you don't want that happening with, say, a Boeing 737 Max for, you know, just a hypothetical example. Just, I, just to pull something out of thin air. I mean, just, just sure. Just if there were hypothetically a bug that caused the plane to nosedive immediately after takeoff, you'd probably want to figure out what's causing that. Um, and and so, you know, there always a a bug is not a bug. There there's a very wide variance in how in how problematic a bug is. Mm-hmm. This one seems on the grand scale of, you know, everything working fine to Boeing 737 Max. It's not that bad, but uh, it is a bug that, you know, the developer concern tape has not fixed yet, and it hasn't stopped the game from otherwise being uh, incredibly successful. Yeah, exactly. No, I mean, you can find the game on almost any platform, but, you know, it's certainly something that we talk to our students about when Mm -hmm. we're talking about software testing is that there is a there's diminishing returns. And at some point you have to be able to ship the software because you can't just you can't not because you mm-hmm. have to make back those costs. And right. so, um, and yeah, also you shipping... have to compete with potentially other people releasing games. I mean, there's, there's what's it called now story of seasons. It used to be harvest moon. Yeah. But there's story of seasons that is starting value is basically meant to directly compete with. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and of course then after Stardew Valley initially came out, everyone wants to make the next stardew valley and so they have you know as stardew valleys continue to update the game those updates are competing with brand new stardew valleys and so sometimes you have to say look i don't have time to sit and stop the whole process to fix this random two heart bug that shows up incredibly rarely right so i'm just gonna ship it as is well then there's also just reproducibility i mean exactly you know, exactly I, yeah 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 I, it's going to happen. And, and you know... I have a good example t- on reproducibility. Okay. The Nats, the Nats air traffic control system, uh, which is at Heathrow Airport in London, uh, uh-huh. completely crashed in December of 2014. And, and planes had to be diverted. There were massive delays at the airport. They had to reboot basically the entire system. The bug that, was, that caused that crash mm-hmm. had been in the code since 1969. 69 not that is not a misspeak and no, I heard, yeah. and and for that to well yeah i know but it's for emphasis um, oh okay okay i'm sorry sorry <laughs> for sorry I, no, yes no. right and and the point is the confluence of factors that would cause that bug to emerge required such precise uh value set for tons of variables to occur that they couldn't come up with it in testing, and it was a very thoroughly tested system, that the number of tests they would need to make in order to test all the combinations would be on the order of tens of millions. And so they didn't find that bug, and it was so rare, it took uh, 45 years to manifest. Until it yeah. finally... Yeah, until it, it finally it, actually <laughs> caused the problem, until it appeared in, in, in practice. I'm not saying that that's is an acceptable failure compared to the two hearts of uh, two hearts issue in Stardew Valley. There's certainly an order, a few orders of magnitude difference there, but but the point right. is that can happen. Sure, and 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 as the as the software that you're working on falls on different levels of criticality, from mm-hmm. whether it being something that is affecting people's lives to something that is literally just comfort software, as in you know gaming software, that sort of thing, to something in the middle that it's it's the critical software for the a business to be making money. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that that has to be something that comes into into play when making a decision about shipping with bugs. I mean, you know, the, the there's always the meme and I'm a Hearthstone player. You you play hots, you know, we are we are intimately a, a aware of the things that Blizzard does and does not do when when things are coming out. And uh, with, you know, with, the, with Heroes of the Storm specifically, mostly does not do. Okay, that's fair. You know, it's kind of done. It's kind of done. You're, <laughs> you're past kind of this a dead now. Game. We we, yeah. we had a patch, uh, the first patch in two months, like a week ago. 
Yeah, is Christmas event still going on? Uh, it's not Christmas anymore. Christmas ended uh, mid, mid, or no, about a week ago. So May eighteenth. Okay. Well, you know they so like we, to we celebrate didn't get Christmas in July. Long. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, but you know, in Hearthstone, the, the meme is 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 that you know um, small indie company is the, is the meme, and they're not mm-hmm. putting the time and what. No, they are. But there are real reasons why software ships the way it does from mm-hmm. time to market from uh, testability so anyway hey are you ready for you ready for another question yes i am and here is one that doesn't have an answer this is one that is much more uh a little bit we have to kind of feel out what we think and and i think this is a question that that i definitely have felt in my soul and students have certainly asked me about in some way and this question comes to us from Reddit, it comes from the No Stupid Questions subreddit, which I think is that, a, that's a, a challenge. A, <laughs> I, no, I think this is I think this is this 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 has some meat on the bones right here. And the question is that that was asked by Airbag Steering Wheel: Can I just tell an employer that I suck at interviews? I I suck at interviews. I don't know what it is. It's like I have some sort of stage fright or just get stuck at presenting myself and I can barely talk. I feel afraid even though I'm not and I can't express my qualities and qualifications well and not much more than that. However, when it comes to actually working, I'm perfectly fine. No hiccups, no fear, nothing. So can I just tell the person that I'm interviewing that I suck at interviews? And I think this is something that that faculty feel Mm-hmm. In a real way, because interviews for faculty positions are just mm-hmm. different. They're just weird because you come in and you individually talk to a bunch of people about the research mm-hmm. you did, which has yeah. nothing to do with the ability to actually teach a class. Right. And we're not HR professionals, but yet we are the ones that are, you know, we, we talk about hiring new faculty and interviewing people. Yeah. See, I and, have the opposite problem. I'm great at interviewing, but as you've learned, I'm terrible at this job. No. Well, you um, know, <laughs> you're, you're a work in progress. Well, you know, you got past that first stage, and we're getting you through it. It's it's all good. But I let, I actually want to 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 yeah. Let's play this out for a second. You know, let's mm-hmm. let's sure. Let, let's think about this. If you went into an internship, sort of, I'm thinking like our lower level students. If you went to an internship interview, mm-hmm. and you just said, hey. This is my deal. I'm kind of I'm kind of shy. I'm not going to be the best to answer the questions, but give me a task. Let me prove it to you. Mm-hmm. What do you think would happen? Um well, it it depend I think it depends a lot on the setting of the interview. For example, if this is a career day and they're trying to interview like 100 students in a day and mm-hmm. so they're giving everyone 5 minutes, I mean, unfortunately, I don't think that would help. That's yeah, fair. Um, just, just simply because when you have that little time, if it's not, you know, like an on-site interview or something, and you only have five minutes to talk to the person, I, I don't think that would help you. I, I think hmm. that would actually hurt you, in fact, to say that. Um, but if it were an on-site interview, what, what I would say is, e- even if it were in that five-minute interview, rather than frame it as, I'm bad at interviewing, but give me a problem and I'll solve it, you, you could kind of turn that on its head and, and try to direct the interview towards, here are problems that I have solved. You know, here is a website I made in, in, in mm-hmm. 3240, for example. Here is um, a project I made to help, you know, to help me maintain my grading information or whatever. So, some side project I made that wasn't even for a class. If you could direct the interview to that direction and say, look, here is the work I've done and spend the time talking about that work. Because um, you, you, you can direct the interview a little bit from that position. I think that would help. Um, but the other... I guess, well, first, do you have anything kind of to say just in response to that part? Well, I mean, it's something that we talk to our students all about is is putting that portfolio together. You know, yeah. if you have a if you have a, a GitHub repo that has all the projects you've worked on and you can tell a story around that mm-hmm. and let that be the power that let that be the driving thing. I mean, look, neither of us have really been in industry. I was at IBM Correct, for yeah. kind of a couple of years, kind of ish. I, I was finishing I was my not degree. even that. I was yeah. not even that. And so, you know, if 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 someone came to me in that in in that that sort of position, 
I probably would be very sympathetic to that. I would say, mm -hmm. yeah, wow, look at this portfolio is exactly what I want to see. And and there are certainly stories that have been out about, oh, this this kid uh, went out and built their own island in Skyrim using the modeling tools. And that mm -hmm. was just the reason that the kid got got the job. Mm -hmm. it, it even really because just showed here. Here's what I got. This is yeah. me. This is and, my and, stuff. And if I can chime in a bit here, I mean, that right now. The portfolio, especially in, 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 in CS or in programming or in graphic design or whatever, that portfolio is is so important that I would say if you show up to an interview with a, a mediocre portfolio and a 4.0 GPA versus like a 3.2 GPA and a portfolio that blows them away, like I would much rather be that second student with the great portfolio with the lower GPA. I mean, that's. I would argue even without a degree, depending yeah, on the position. Even without a degree, and, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. If you have a great, I mean, well, this is, I mean, in a practical standpoint, my cousin uh, has has a ton of startup experience in Philadelphia, and he does a lot of work that we would consider like things we teach in computer science. His degrees in graphic design, and yet he's doing like back end development type stuff now because he's he's taken to that. He's not traditionally trained as a computer scientist, but he's doing the exact work that someone would think someone with a computer science degree would do. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, uh, I guess let me give ahead. you some of the answers here that, that some people have given. Um, uh, some people are saying it really depends upon the position. It can be looked at positive because you're not afraid to admit it. And I like that energy where it's like I'm being vulnerable in this interview. I'm, I'm showing you that that side. Um, but uh, there is some, you know, pretty sage advice here. It says you might not want to just say I suck at interviews. Yeah, you might want to yeah. couch that in something a little bit more. Let my let my portfolio speak for me. Yeah. Maybe not as much just uh, hey. Nice to meet you, uh, Mr. or Mrs. Potential Employer. Just to let you know, the next 25 minutes of this conversation will be incredibly awkward because I am just terrible at talking you know, to people. Probably not a good lead in. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, a, a, a lot, too, of what they're looking for in these interviews is soft skills. And, and so, yes, mm. I mean, the quality of your ability to speak is something they're going to judge. I guess one thing I, I would like to chime in is there's a little bit of fatalistic language in that question that I almost mm. kind of want to push back a bit on. And it's that mm. I suck at interviews. That is something that, that and, and to be clear, like that, you know, the individual may feel very nervous and shy and uncomfortable during interviews. But that. It, no one, no one comes out of the womb like, hey, I'm, I, I, I am, I am Larry King. Like Larry King came out there screaming and crying like the rest of us, right? What he does great How interviews. Did you pull Larry? He does great uh, interviews. But he's okay, the one fine, doing David the Letterman? interviewing. Well, no, okay. but he's the one doing the interview. I've never actually. To now, I think about it. I don't know if I've ever seen an interview of Larry King. I have. I have. I need to go find that now. Yeah. Um, anyway, point being, nobody is is born incredibly skilled at anything, and 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 doing well in interviews is a skill like any other that you harvest. Now, some people like every skill. Some people need to put more work to develop that skill set effectively. I, for example, am actually painfully shy in real life. I feel very uncomfortable at parties, one on one interactions. I do fine. Um, mm. Some people, the opposite could be true. They struggle with one-on-one -on -one interactions, but they do fine in front of, uh, uh, um, you know, they do fine in large-scale conversations. Oddly, I present fine, but if I'm in a room and the other people are supposed to be talking to me, it gets difficult. But it's a skill set that I work on. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, therefore just tough it up and get better. That's certainly not the 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 answer that I'm, I'm trying to give. But right. what I would say is look for opportunities to develop that skill set, even if it's as simple as going to friends or colleagues or anyone who, you know, you know, is working in an industry or something and working on that skill. I did practice uh, interviews with my advisor and with two of my letter writers before hmm. I went on the job market. They did practice interviews. And during the interview, like one of the questions is, what is your greatest weakness? And I said, oh yeah, I need to improve my organizational skills. They're bad. And they're like, don't say that. Whatever you, <laughs> like find a way to say, um, find a I way to say that too without much. saying I am, I am disorganized. Find a yeah. way to say like, you know, I, 
I ultimately am involved in a large number of projects, and it took me a while to learn how to address building uh, all of those projects simultaneously without getting wires crossed. Like... That that little trickery of language now makes it sound like I'm a positive, really enthusiastic worker, and I've improved this skill, even though I'm saying the skill set that I was developing was organizational skills. Um, but still, that question and the where do you see yourself in X years are just the... I hate those questions. They're just the worst. It's like, where are you going to be in five years? Still thinking of an answer to this question. I was in Indiana five years ago. So, like, you know. Yeah. uh, And and then I've moved twice in the interim. Like, I don't know where I was. Although, if you did say, (laughs) I was going to be in the middle of a pandemic, you might have... You, 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 you would probably have some uh, some international health agencies wanting to talk to you right now if you had yeah, said yeah. that. Yeah, probably so. Yeah. Probably so. You got another question for us? Um, all right. Let's we, we, we've done really serious thought provoking yes. questions. Yes. So Chuck Norris. Chuck so, Norris definitely well, in the well, serious no, category. I mean, all right. So. And, and maybe maybe this is going to be the, the running theme that I'm going to have the stupid questions. How do I lick a plane? <laughs> I'll wait, repeat that. Wait, no, no. I, 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 I want right now. Are we talking airplane or are we talking like like the third dimension, like that sort of plane? Um, it says a plane that's flying around in the world. So I'm going to go with probably an airplane, but probably an airplane, but maybe, maybe this is a very low res game. Okay. All right. All right. How do I look a plane? So first we're, we're already, we're already stipulating the question a bit. Is the plane, uh, in motion? Is the airplane moving when you want to look at this? Okay, you have to tell me what, where did this come from? So I could put this in some sort of so context. This is, in, this, this is from Arcade on Stack Overflow. Okay, because well, if, if this exchange. was like life pro tips, this is no, going to be even no. weirder to deal with. Yeah, okay. no, it, that would be everyone who opened that link is going to get a call from like the TSA or, or Homeland Security or something. No. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is from Arcade. Do you want to guess the game? Based on the Ooh. fact that I'm I'm asking about licking an airplane, something like Grand Theft Auto Five or Saints Row the Third. Yeah, the the the, the incredibly well known licking mechanics in Grand Theft Auto Five that really hey. played a big role in the game. Hey, well, you know what? I didn't get terribly far before I turned it off. Um, so, but hey, it's a life simulator. You never know what you're going to, in, in, in San Andreas, you could eat hamburgers and get fat. So, you yeah. know, I'm not putting it past that there's a licking mechanic, a, a goat simulator. You are, there it is. Goat simulator. Yes. Yeah. So a friend of mine told me I would get an achievement if I manage to lick the plane that's flying around the world, he won't tell me how to get close to it. I've tried many different things. Jumping on trampolines won't get me high enough. And the only thing that looks high enough is the crane, but I somehow can't jump that far when the plane or glider, I don't actually know what it really is, shows up there. How can I lick that thing, and what is the achievement I can get from it? I hope it's a really clever achievement name. Like, oh, it, it, that, no, the achievement name is 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 worse. The achievement name, the because uh-huh. it's a hidden achievement. The okay. achievement name, uh, the achievement name. So it turns out it is actually a glider, not a plane. But is well, that changes mile everything. High, mile High Club lick the hanging glider. <sighs> okay, all right. <laughs> How would I get a goat high enough to lick a plane? Now, the trampoline well, was my first let, guess. Be- yeah. I would say let's start with how would we do it? Because obviously getting oh. a goat to do My dad has goats, or at least he has a goat right now because coyotes. Um, <laughs> but, <Okay. laughs> yeah, that, that, got, that got dark there, but it is, it is actually true. Um Let's just say how would you do it? Because uh, trust me when I say other than eating grass it's hard to get a goat to do anything okay so we are talking because you are i'm making sure i understand the direct object of you here is in how you as a human being yes how no is in like how i mark sheriff would get high enough to lick a plane me personally okay sure let's go with that 
Oh, okay. Now it's a different question. Yeah. All right. Um, Wait, as opposed to what? If you were if you were Chuck Norris, it would be easier. It would be so much easier. Um, he can jump really I, high. He just I, roundhouse I mean, kick the ground. I, I I would I would really want to come at it from above. Come at I it from above. I would like okay. to get in a in a bigger plane. Okay. Higher plane. It's a glider. It's not going that fast. Wait, why why does it need to be a bigger plane? Could can it just be a higher plane? It. Did, Hey, All right, go ahead. Sh- 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 <laughs> bigger plane has to be bigger plane. Okay, okay? bigger plane. So I'm Got above it. the glider. I'm above the glider, and somehow I get over my horrible fear of heights, and I jump out of the plane, mm-hmm. aiming for the glider, and do that cool like you know, put your arms by your side to point yourself in a, in a direction. Now, now and then presumably probably die. If, right? Can I? Can, presumably at this point, you would have had to have gotten a skydiving certification to be able to skydive alone. Right, because there's no way that one oh, of the sure. trainers is okay. So, so we, so before we do this, we spend a, a few months getting our skydiving certification. Okay, now you're doing like the the pull your arms in, make mm-hmm. yourself aerodynamic to to like oh, yeah. fire like a bullet. Got it. You're you're firing yep. yourself at a bullet at a hang glider from above. Wait, it's a hang glider? I thought it was like a glider plane. Okay, glider plane. Fine. I, I don't actually okay. know what it is. Whatever. I'm aiming for that sucker, and I'm just okay. going to face plan into it, because I'm going to get that achievement before I'm dead. <laughs> I mean, that's really the goal, right? Yeah, I mean, when you're trying there, to go for some of these... Are you worried about the safety of the person in the glider? Nah, nah, nah. I, th- this, is, this, is, this is for the achievement. Okay. And we have to... The Chivos are worth it. <laughs> okay. That's just the end. That's it. That's how <laughs> I'm doing it. Now, for a goat, for a goat, I want a trebuchet. Okay. All right. That makes I, sense. I want. I want. And I want a pump because I, trebuchets are superior, as, as that, we all know. Yeah, as we know from Punkin' Chunkin' on the Discovery Channel, that this is the way we're going to get something. Now, the aiming, yada 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 yada. It's going to take some goats. It's going to take trebuchets some goats. can be and reasonably really, accurate, though. I. But you know what? I just really hope that there is some sort of ding that happens in real life. Some sort of. In my personal field of view, some HUD thing that comes up with a little PlayStation a little trophy X over the over the hang glider. <laughs> yep, that shows that I hit, I hit that glider with you know Grumpy the flying goat here. That's that's my tack. How are you doing it? Um, I mean, it's a glider. It has to land eventually. Oh, okay, sure. If we're gonna bring logic into this conversation, we'll wait for the I mean, obvious and then, answer. And then I'm just, I'm so I'm just gonna have a car drive around under it. It's a glider. It's not gonna go that fast, right? Okay. And then when it lands, I'm just gonna like just dead sprint across the field for it, <laughs> holding and, like, the, the guy's gonna be like carrying the glider and like running away as fast as he can. Hey, and you're just gonna see this doing? this ball. Stay away from me. This bald guy chasing after. So someday, someone is, is going to be driving through the countryside, and they're just going to see like my bald self chasing down this guy with a glider, with my tongue hanging out, and they're going to think, "What the hell is going on?" <laughs> and then I'm going to go to jail, uh, which I, I believe that's how that works. Oh God! <laughs> but I'll have gotten the achievement. But you have gotten and, the achievement. And when they ask me from across the cell, "What are you in for?" I will say, "Do I have a story for you?" Mm. And it all started with Goat Simulator. So, well, you have to tell us now. Yeah. How do you do it in game? If I if I wanted to boot up Goat Simulator on one of my many devices mm-hmm. that can play Goat Simulator, how would I do it? Apparently, it is you need to climb on top of the crane and you need to just perform a jump and land on top of the glider. So, so okay. now now picture yourself as the glider. You're just in a glider. You're going around having a lovely. Just- I'm going to assume a Saturday afternoon, you know, because you don't want you got to you can't do it on a work day. Right. No, because 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 then the air is cooling. It's going to you want the air warming. So it lifts you up more. Right. So it's got to be in the it's got to be in the afternoon, which can't be can't be a work day. You don't want to want to do it on Sunday because then you're going to just be tired on Monday. Right. So Saturday afternoon. Right. And then, you know, Mm -hmm. you're just gliding around and you're looking at that new construction site from above. Like, hey, you know, can't wait to see what this skyscraper looks like. Suddenly goat just lands on top of you and starts like licking you <laughs> and or the glider that you're using that's gonna kind of ruin your weekend right that's probably yeah that's that's yeah probably ruin the glide probably ruin the goat i think what we learned today is when you are hang gliding uh stay away from cranes because they might contain goats you know if there is one lesson that we could share with everyone today yeah 
Just there, don't there hang glide near goat cranes. So 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 let's recap here, okay? This is, you know, inaugural episode of Regrade Request. And what have we covered? We we started by covering an interesting aspect of HTML. So we're starting mm-hmm. in our in our realm. We're both mm-hmm. software engineering professors. You know, it's web design mm-hmm. seems good. We jump over to gaming, which again right. in our wheelhouse and and an interesting dip into marriage territory, which could have potentially been dangerous for both of us, but yeah. I think we skirted that. Okay. We come back to talk about uh, interview advice mm-hmm. and, 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 and making sure you have a great portfolio. And we end with goat licking. And you know what? I don't know any no, no, better no. way. Licking goats. It's very important. No, we're not licking goats. The, the, the goats goat themselves, the they, are, they are goats that are yeah. doing the licking. I, I feel yeah. we have to make that patently clear. I, I, I mean, if it's if it's not, you know, we've just wasted people's time. Exactly. Exactly. Well, I hope I hope everyone has enjoyed this first little foray uh, into into podcasting, at least for me. Uh, same, although same uh, well. McBurney and I have both recorded multiple different uh, video lectures, which mm-hmm. uh, which I don't know. Might be better content, maybe worse content. I don't really know. We'll just have to find out. But if you have anything, we, that we, we, like, didn't, we didn't cover nearly as much goat related content in our class as I feel we should have in hindsight. I, we'll have to make that change for the fall. But if you if you have anything you'd like to tell us, you can send it to uh, Mark or Will at regradequest.com. You can hit me on Twitter at Mark Sheriff. That's two R's and two F's in Sheriff. And Will, your twiddle, Twitter, Twitter. Twiddle. I think it's Prof McBurney, but I'm not actually sure. <laughs> I don't use it a lot. Um, mostly I use it to whine about WVU sports. Yeah. Uh, that is it true. Is, it is, um, yeah, Prof McBurney, M C B U R N E Y. So if you have anything to let us know about, we'd love to hear it. Thank you so much for hanging out with us for a little bit of time and. I have no clever sign-off. Do you have a clever sign-off? We need a clever sign-off. Watch for falling goats. Watch for... (laughs) And always watch for falling goats. (laughs) I I don't think that'll stick. You don't think so? No. No.